over a demonstration of Square for restaurants in a full service atmosphere. This is my home screen. I can customize the background however I want. I can put whatever logo or picture that I want to. And in the middle, you'll see a keypad. You want to give all your employees a four digit pin code with Square. That's going to allow you to track sales per employee, tips per employee. And you'll also want to set up different permission levels for your different employees. You might not want your bar back issuing refunds. You might not want your servers viewing reports. You'll be able to dictate who's able to do what with the pin code or an actual physical badge as well. You can also clock in and out directly through Square. All your team management functionality will come first party with Square. I'm going to clock in. And you can see on this screen, it does say no scheduled shifts. So that does go to show another component of Square is the shift scheduling capabilities. If you'd like to use Square shift scheduling, your staff would download an app on their phones or their tablets it's called Square Teams. That would allow them to track their shifts, request off, attempt to swap shifts with other employees, so on and so forth. If you are using that capabilities, you can prevent your staff from clocking in early. You can do auto clock out after their shifts. They can also clock in and out directly through that app if you if you want them to. I'm going to clock in. You can see right here, I have the option to clock in as a server or a bartender. Square allows you to have multiple jobs for individual employees with different wage rates attached to those multiple jobs. So for example, when I'm a server, you're paying me 12 bucks an hour plus tips. When I'm a bartender, you're paying me $10 an hour plus tips. You can have multiple jobs with different wage rates for your individual employees. We do also have first party payroll. If you're interested in really streamlining your operation, since all the data will already be in here, if you're having them clock in and out through Square, you get your staff paid with just a couple clicks of a button with our payroll software. Now that I'm clocked in, I can put my code in here and go into the POS. Once I do that, it'll take me into my table map. Your table map and floor plan will be 100% customizable. This is just kind of a basic dining room I have set up, but I can also swipe my finger if I do have multiple sections. Here's my patio, for example, and I can also hit my finger on the name of the floor plan at the top left there to very quickly go between floor plans. To start a table, it's very, very straightforward. I can click my finger on table nine and it's gonna to wanna to know my cover counts. So with our cover counts, it's gonna track how many people are coming into your restaurants rather than just how many transactions you guys are doing. So you'll get a better data set that way on per head data rather than just per transactional data. And you can also assign items to specific seats so you can bring the right food out to the right person and if you want to check, split up the check by seat at the end of the transaction, you can do so since we're tracking who got what. I'll do a three top here and it'll take me into my item grid on the left side of my screen and my check is on the right side of the screen. The item grid is 100% customizable. You can change the colors of the tiles, the sizes of the tiles. You can put pictures on the tiles if you want. It is completely up to you how you want to set this up. For this particular item grid, I have my categories there on the top there and then my most popular items underneath those categories. So if I'm selling a ton of Domas, I got it right on my home screen. I don't need to click into my starters and then find the appetizer. Since it's my most popular item, I just want them right on my home screen. Um, let's course some items out here in a second. But before I do that, I also like to call out the fact that you can have multiple menus. So if I hit the little menu icon at the top there, you can see that I can have as many different menus as I want here. So by that, I mean, you can, if you're running a lunch menu versus dinner menu with different items on there, you can have as many different layouts as you need. Or if I'm behind the bar and I want to use this bar speed screen up, maybe I would have this one up on my bar device. Then you can have different menus on your different devices. But for now, let's just work off this menu. And let's say this table wants to get some drinks started. So I can click into my cocktails. Seat one wants a whiskey drink, so I can click on my house whiskey. And here's how Square is going to do modifiers. So I click on my whiskey drink and you can see on the right side of the screen, my different modifier sets associated with my whiskey. And on this one, I only have one. How do you want your whiskey? And I want it neat. So we'll mark it neat. And I can also assign it to a seat like I was talking about. Seat one wants it. And if I ever need to type something into this notes box here, I can very easily just type it in there. That will print on my bar ticket in this case. Obviously, we'll be able to route your printers or your items to specific printers. You want your whiskey drinks to go to your bar, obviously. You want your food to go to your kitchen. So we'll be able to route those uh, based on category. Now I got my whiskey drink on there. We'll add it to the check. And you can see it's on the check now. I also like to scroll down here. And I like to note that uh, now you can see there's a happy hour discount that has appeared. So my house whiskey drinks are $2 off during my happy hour, which for my fake restaurant is the entire day. So I can show it off on these demos. 
But point big is you will, will be able to set up time-based discounts for specific days or specific hours during those specific days. And you can do all your items or specific items or specific categories, so on and so forth. So very easy to set up happy hour type discounts with Square. And let's say the other person here wants a eliminate, and we can add it to seat two there. I had to check. Let's send this out there. And you can also see my drinks on the right side of the screen there are set to straight fire. So I don't need to course out these drinks. Generally when you're inputting drinks, people don't want to wait for them. They just want to drink them. So I just have my drink set to straight fire. So we'll send that. It's going to spit me back out to the table map at that point. And you can see table nine is kind of in a gray color. It's got a timer on there. Since we just opened it, it's still at zero minutes. And you can see table two in red and it has an 18 minute timer on there. Uh, you can set different parameters about when your tables will turn different colors. So I believe I have mine set for after five minutes, it's going to turn yellow. And after 10 minutes, it's going to turn red. That is obviously up to you what parameters you want to set on there. But it will give your staff kind of a visual cue about what tables need to be turned. And one more note on colors on your table map. If you are utilizing a reservation partner, the table would show up purple, signify the reservation is there. And then when I go into that table, all the guest information would populate within there as well too. Now, when I go back into table nine, everything I've sent already has scrolled up there. It keeps it really nice and organized. If I wanted another whiskey drink, for example, I can click on the fired items and I can very easily swipe my finger to the right to repeat the item. Use case would bring me another whiskey, please. You don't have to go in there and find the whiskey. You can very easily just swipe your finger on it. To delete items off the check, you simply swipe your finger the opposite direction to remove it. Now let's course out some food. This table wants to start with some appetizers or starters. Uh, so you can see I have starters highlighted there on the right side of the screen. Just to note, you can customize the name of the courses. It doesn't have to be starters, mains, desserts. You can have up to 12 courses and you can name them whatever you want there. But let's start with some dolmas and maybe some hummus for the table. So we'll do some dolmas. We'll do some hummus. Notice that I have those items set to one click add. They don't have any modifiers on them, so I just want to be quick with it. So I have those items specifically set to just one click add to be quick. Now you can also see there's a little fire symbol that has appeared at that point next to the starters. This is going to give your servers and your staff the ability to dictate when these courses are sent to the kitchen. If this table is like, hey, I want to finish this drink first before you put those starters in. Okay, no problem. I'll just move the little symbol to the hold symbol. And this means, this tells the kitchen, hey, don't make this yet. When I want to fire it, I can very easily just hit the fire symbol and then send it and it'll be good to go. But since we're coursing this out, maybe this table did their research. They know what they want for their mains as well too. So I can click on mains. The first person at seat one wants a steak special. I click on state special. Here's some more modifier logic. I'm hitting add to check on the bottom right right here. It's grayed out. It's not going to let me until I fill out the required mods here. Uh, first and foremost, the size of this steak, it's going to change the price. I obviously want to make sure my staff is getting that. This guy's hungry. He wants a 32 ounce Wagyu steak. So we'll click on there. And then it's, again, it's going to walk me through the different options on here. How do you want your steak cooked? Again, I'm forcing my staff to input there. So I'll do medium rare. What do you want for your side? I'll take a baked potato. And then again, we can assign it to a seat so you know who gets what. You can bring it out to the right person, make it a very good experience. We'll put this in seat one and to check. And now you can see, since I haven't fired the starters yet, my mains are going to be defaulting to hold because if you are coursing it out, it assumes that you, you know, want to hold any subsequent courses uh, to what you haven't fired yet. And let's say the other guy wants a shrimp kebab. Uh, what size do you want? Do you want the two skewers or the four skewers? Again, this is required, so I'm forcing my staff to get that. We'll do two skewers. And then here's where we can get into our conversational modifiers as well, too. So this add extra side sub no allergy at the top left here. Um, this is going to allow you to get just much more transparent with your back of house. Because I could just hit, you know, tzatziki. And that's how it's going to print on my kitchen ticket, just tzatziki. But maybe I want to take it a step further here and I want to do add tzatziki. That's going to print add tzatziki on your kitchen ticket. Again, just gives you a much higher level of transparency with your back of house. Or maybe I want the tzatziki on the side. Let me do side tzatziki, and that's how it's going to print on there. And again, we can uh, assign it to a seat if we need to and type in a note if we need to. So now I've got my starters in there and my mains, and since we are coursing this out, I want to hit send here, and at this point, my starters are going to be fired to the kitchen to let them know, hey, start working on the, on the starters. 
If I ever need to move a table or assign it to a different server or anything along those lines, I can very easily do it by hitting the actions tab at the top right here. I'll choose table nine. And now you can see at the top right, I can hit move aside void cop. If I need to move it to a different table, I hit move. Uh, I can move it to existing check if I need to merge checks, but I could always hit new check and choose whatever, ta whatever table I need to move it to. So very, very easy. Just a couple clicks of a button to do that. Let's go back into table nine. Again, everything I've already fired has scrolled up there. And you can also see right underneath mains on the right side of my screen. It does say sent zero minutes ago. So it will timestamp the last time you sent the last course. And when I'm ready to fire the mains, it's very, very easy. I change it to the fire symbol and then hit send. And that's letting my kitchen know, yep, let's get these mains going at this point. Before I move on, if I hit the actions tab at the top right here, here's where all your admin duties are going to live. Splitting the checks up again. I could split by seat automatically if I need to or manually split items move different items to different checks as needed auto gratuity is another thing i like to talk about on here you can manually apply the auto grat no problem but you could also do the auto grat automatically based on that cover count that i put in earlier so if you want auto grat to automatically apply to tables of five or more for example you can very easily do so scroll down here a little bit more the other thing i like to talk about on here is the gift cards so with square we support physical gift cards and electronic gift cards for physical gift cards, it's a one-time cost for the plastic. You're purchasing the actual physical gift cards. There is no monthly recurring fees for gift card functionality. The e-gift cards, you can sell those both online and in store. And again, there's no monthly or upfront cost associated with that. So a very, very cost-effective way of doing gift cards, whether it be physical gift cards or electronic gift cards. Then finally, this guest tab at the top right. You can actually look up any guest that's ever been into your establishment before. So if I come in there and I'm like, hey, what did I get last time? Oh, Adam, what's your phone number? What's your email? What's your name? You can look me up right at the POS. Oh, you got the Mediterranean salad last time. Would you like that again? I sure would. Boom, I can hit add right through there. You can also see it's going to track my spend. It's going to track how often I'm coming in. So you get a very, very high level of insight into your customer database right at the POS. From a marketing perspective, it might be even more valuable because I could pull a report on everybody that bought a steak special in the last six months. And I wanted to say, hey, we have a new steak on the menu. We think you might like it. You can get very, very targeted with your marketing through Square. So as we are tracking purchase history, how often they're coming in and helping you co collect contact information as well too. But let's pay for this one. So I could hit pay. This will take me to the payment screen. This will be very, very straightforward. How do you want to pay? Cash, gift card, card on file is another functionality on here that comes into play every once in a while. If you want to save regular cards on file or maybe your employees' cards on file, you can do so with Square. But I'll mark this one as cash, 240 bucks. It's going to tell me how much change is up. And then at this point, this is kind of device specific and customer specific. If you want people to sign and tip on the screen, you can. We do have handheld devices for table side ordering that will behave the exact same way that I've been demoing today. Or you could obviously print out a receipt and have people sign on the receipt. That is, you know, up to you. But no receipt. Again, if you are having them sign on the screen, you can also kind of get them to sign up for your marketing program or sign up for your loyalty program right at the POS as well too. And then on to the next one.